include probably as an announcement or right right after. Yes, this year, especially this year. This year, more than ever. Not because it wasn't so bad. Not because next year will be better. Not because some good things happened. Not even just because God says so. Rejoice in the Lord, you people of the Lord, because Christ is Lord. This is the year of the Lord's favor. This is the year of God's grace. Again, we are still the redeemed, still ransomed by the blood, still furiously convinced, especially this year, that neither life, nor death, nor pandemic, nor lockdown, nor masks, nor isolation, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We will give thanks this year not in spite of what was lost, but because of what cannot be. We'll rejoice in the Lord because we are the people of the Lord. Let's do more than count our blessings. Let's count ourselves among the blessed. I'll say it again, rejoice. Well, good afternoon, guys. It's great to be back into the house of God. As we sing to God's praises for all the great things that he does. So come, let us worship the King. Ooh. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. We see what our Savior has done. See what our Savior has done To see how his love overcomes He has done great things Yes, he has And he has done great things He's our hero of heaven Whoa, hero of heaven You conquer the grave You free, free captive And break every chain, oh God you have done great things. We thank you, you freed up, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Oh! Our God has been faithful through every storm. Oh, you've been faithful through every storm. Oh yes, and you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things. We know that our Lord will do it again. And I know you will do it again. And for your promises, yes and amen. You will do great things. 
every day. In God you do great things. To our hero in heaven, whoa, hero, hero heaven, you conquer the grave. You free and free captain and break every chain, oh God. You have done great things. We dance it. Oh, hallelujah, you have done great things each and every day. Oh, hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, good shake Thank you, Satellite Band, for getting us started off as you do each week. John, great to have you back after a couple of weeks. Welcome to Trinity Downtown uh, and our satellite service. Uh, if you're watching this live uh, somewhere in Houston, somewhere in Texas, somewhere around uh, the country uh, or around the world, welcome and to all those that are worshiping with us live and in person. Uh, if you're interested in watching this live or worshiping us with live in person, uh, we are here in this space, downtown Houston, uh, every Saturday night at 5 p.m. Uh, you also may be watching this later, and we, wherever time, if, you, if it's more convenient for you uh, to watch uh, on demand, uh, we're just, we hope, we pray that the service tonight, uh, the message, the music can be a blessing to you as we again share uh, the good news of salvation and hope uh, in a father that gives up his only son to live, die, and uh, forgive us again of all of our sins. Uh, so we are, we are thrilled that you are here. Uh, we start tonight a, uh, a three-week little mini-series called Oil and Water. I think you're going to really enjoy uh, the messages. Uh, Pastor Dorn will kick us off with that, uh, with that tonight. And so as we come into this place again, we are met with our triune God that, you know, it's hard to understand, but God's Word just tells us that he is three and one and one and three. And so we call upon his name as we begin our worship tonight. And we worship in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father everlasting the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name. Our 
tonight um, comes from the book of First Thessalonians. Um, that's in the New Testament. It's a book that Paul wrote. It's actually a word that we use, a churchy word called an epistle, um, and it's a letter to a church uh, at Thessalonica. So if you lived in Thessalonica, you were thus a Thessalonian. And this may be, for many of you, maybe a very familiar and comforting uh, word of scripture. Uh, for others, uh, maybe the first time you're hearing it, uh, but we share God's word with you tonight. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. You know, again, this may be, as I said, a, a scripture that you're familiar with. Um, it's followers to be vigilant and ready uh, and, and to not fall away from the faith. Because that's really what Jesus is warning us about. 
Well, perhaps I can answer that by saying, um, by addressing a question that is often asked about this parable is, what does the oil represent? And I've heard different scholars, uh, Christian scholars, talk about, well, it represents this or it represents that. And I, I'm going to just stay general and, 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 and speak of it this way. That oil represents whatever you need to be ready to honor Jesus when he comes again. When he comes for you, when he comes again. What, that oil represents whatever you need to be, a, be doing in order to be ready to honor him. And that could be very different depending upon your personal situation or your spiritual needs. For example, that oil could be repentance. Uh, repenting for something that, uh, the, the, that a sin that has plagued you so that you're ready. It could be digging into God's Word. It could be that oil and making it a daily habit. It could be an increase in your prayer life. It could be a diligence in sharing the gospel. It could be humbly evaluating your tithes and offerings to the Lord. It's whatever, you get the idea, it's whatever it needs to be so that you will be ready to receive and honor Jesus when he comes for you. I really like that reading that uh, Matt shared with you from 1 Thessalonians at the beginning of the service. Here's the good news. None of us would ever truly be ready for the bridegroom to come. None of us should have the door open to us to come in. And yet, that's precisely why Jesus came. Is because our sinfulness would keep us from that. Jesus forgave our sins. And so we want to be ready to give him honor and glory, but that isn't going to keep us out. But I would encourage you to be doing things to be ready for the day of the Lord. And I would add this. From that reading that Matt shared, to encourage one another. Because when there's a delay for anything, it's easy to lose focus and forget the wonderful thing that waits, awaits us. So tonight I encourage you with Jesus lives and he's coming again. So get ready. Let's pray. Father, um, we thank you so very much for sending your son, and we look forward to his return. We pray, Lord, that um, if that is a long way off yet, that you would help us to stay focused on what's really important and not to be distracted by all the things that are going on in this world um, that would, would sidetrack our faith and cause uh, the flame of our lamp to sputter. But, Lord, work in our hearts to help us to see the things that we need to do by your Holy Spirit, that we might be ready to truly honor the one who comes for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Part of being ready is to be forgiven and strengthened in our journey of faith. And uh, at this point in our worship tonight, we're, we're going to uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And so what happens in this meal is we are eating and drinking bread and wine, but actually it's more than that. Because with this bread and wine, we receive what Jesus tells us, that this is his body and blood given to us for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. So if you're a baptized Christian, you share this under the, the same understanding of, of what is going on in this meal, that Jesus is really truly present here, you're invited to participate in this tonight. So if you hold up your communion kit, our Lord Jesus Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So if you'll open your kit and take the bread out and hold it in front of you, the body of Christ given for you, take and eat. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So if you'll open 
the, the cup, the wine portion, and hold it in front of you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast and true faith until the last day. Amen. sun comes up it's a new day dawning it's time to sing your song again whatever may pass and whatever comes before me let me be singing when the evening comes bless the Thank you for continuing to support uh, as an act of worship the ministries of Trinity downtown. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping here tonight, we won't be collecting an offering by passing the plate. There is a, a basket you can uh, make a contribution and uh, share your tithe and offering. Uh, for those of you who are uh, watching or are local, uh, you can either uh, uh, drop off a check during the week uh, or mail a check to 800 Houston Avenue, Houston, Texas, 77007. You can also go to our website, trinitydt.org. Uh, and click on give and uh, contribute that way too. But we, we certainly continue to thank you uh, for uh, the support of our ministries during, during these days. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, close with prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we again thank you for your spirit being with us tonight, that spirit that gives us that strength and courage to be ready. 
ready for when your son comes back and ready for when we are called home. We thank you for the eternal salvation you've given to us through your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, this weekend that we have been blessed to serve the downtown community in Houston for 141 years. Ministries change. Ministry looks a lot different than it did 141 years ago. But, Lord, you have not changed. You are steady. You are the same today, tomorrow, and forever. And so we thank you for those blessings. Uh, Thank you for all those saints that have gone before us and the opportunity to serve. We remember and thank you, Lord, for all of our veterans, uh, the men and women that faithfully uh, serve and have served, and we would just pray that you continue uh, to keep them safe as they protect our freedom. Be with our country tonight, Lord, as we go through a process of uh, certifying vote tallies, and we just pray that you would allow uh, honesty and integrity to go through that whole process uh, and through our leaders, and we just pray that you continue to guide and bless our country. All these things we ask in your son's name, and we commend them in the name uh, of the prayer that your son taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you go into your week, being ready, being ready for whatever God calls you into, go with the grace of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Have a great week. This last song as we leave this place called I Am Set Free.
have a great Sunday and have a great week. You guys go in God's grace and go in God's love. We'll see you next Saturday.